this beaver pelt is stretched on a hoop to dry. The beaver pelts had to be dried so that they wouldn't spoil. It was the under fur here, this rich brown soft fur, that gave the beaver pelt its value. It was this under fur that was taken off the pelt and then was, sh was through a process made into fur felt for the gentlemen's top hats and the military hats. The beaver fur was then and is now the very best felting material for making hats. And at the time uh, in Europe, gentlemen's top hats and military hats uh, for the uh, armies, the navies, all relied on beaver fur felt for their hats. The fur trade in this area started with uh, David Thompson reaching the north shore of Ponderé Lake. And by 1810, he had sent Jocko Finley, a free hunter, over to an area north of Spokane at the junction of the Spokane and Little Spokane Rivers to build Spokane House. And so that was the trading post that served the Indian people in this area. Well, the Indian people, of course, had been here for thousands of years and had their own, their own culture, their own way of doing things. And then here, come the, uh, uh, here comes the beaver fur trade. And these free hunters uh, are trapping beaver on the Indian land. Uh, <clears throat> they're marrying into the tribe. They are becoming part of the tribal culture, part of the tribal economics. Well, the free traders, basically made visits periodically to the trading post, to Spokane House. There were two trapping seasons that the free hunters uh, had. One was in the spring after the ice went out and until about April. And they would be trapping not by themselves but in family units. And there might be eight or ten trappers with their families that maybe would be trapping on the Coeur d'Alene River, on the St. Joe River, or maybe the Little Spokane River, okay? And so they would bring their furs in and the furs would be bailed up, ready to be transported back across Canada. In the fall, probably about September, uh, they would start trapping again and they would trap until there was freeze up, which would be uh, in late November. The free hunters also, as well as the other Indian people, would come into Spokane House to trade deer meat, and so they were supplying the trading post not only with beaver pelts, but also with, with meat and other supplies because the trading posts depended on the Indian people and the free hunters to supply them with food. Uh, before us here are a number of items that uh, are common to the fur trade that uh, free hunters like myself would have, and included is also uh, my trade gun. It was called a Northwest trade gun. It was the most common gun in the fur trade. Uh, they were most all imported from England. They were traded to the Indian people and the trappers like myself. They had to look just right. A sea serpent on the side, a large trigger bow, so it could be shot in the winter with mittens on. And it's about a 20 gauge. So this is uh, good for everything from buffalo to moose to waterfowl. Since I make my living trapping beaver, I <coughs> start out the trapping season generally with a half a dozen of these traps. Uh, they're an item that I would pick up at Spokane House. Uh, I have a trapping bag with me. It includes a container here with beaver scent. The beaver have a scent gland that they used to mark their territory. As a trapper, I harvest those scent glands as well as the pelt. And with those scent glands, I can then put up a false territory marker on a nice mound of mud, just like the beaver do, and use that to draw the beaver in to <coughs> the uh, place where I have my trap set just below that nice scent mound. This is called a carrot of tobacco a French word, carrot, and inside of this uh, wrapped with cod line 
are leaves of tobacco. It's wrapped this way so that it will be kept pretty much dry in all the weather conditions that it has to go through to come from England right here to this area. They've been trading with each other for years. They have their protocols and trades are always made only after smoking with tobacco first. And so tobacco was absolutely essential for the, uh, uh, the trading companies if they were going to get the Indians beavers or if they were trading for horses, uh, whatever it might be, you always had to have tobacco so you could smoke before you made any trades. The fur trade in this area, if we mark David Thompson coming in in 1807, uh, lasted until about the 1850s. Uh, by the 1830s, the beaver pelt value had dropped. It had dropped because gentlemen's top hats were starting to be covered with silk that was imported from China. And the beaver, the price of, the, the price of getting beaver pelts was going up and up. And so the, the hat industry was looking for uh, other sources of material. Today, if you look on maps, you have names of places, they're French names, because that was the, the language of the fur trade. And we could begin with Coeur d'Alene, right here. Uh, also the name of the local Indian people. David Thompson would ask the free hunters, well, what are the names of these Indians? Because they had already found out, and they said, well, these are Coeur d'Alene's. And Thompson wrote down pointed hearts, Thompson could speak French, but his writing of, of French, uh, we think from the journal, he had a pretty limited uh, writing ability, so it was uh, more of a speaking ability. Uh, the name Coeur d'Alene translates into heart of an all. We think that the Coeur d'Alene people, because they were sharp traders, probably were given that name by the other Indian tribes, and it was translated as those pointed hearts. The free hunters, who married into the tribes uh, had French uh, as well as some Indian surnames from their own people. Their children, we know from church records of baptisms, marriages, and deaths, we have those surnames. And so, for example, the name MacDonald is now an old and respected name in the Salish tribe. Uh, Peon, Baptiste, Campbell, Flett, uh, uh, Ignace, uh, these are all names that uh, uh, are, are in the tribes today. One of our local authors said that the uh, phone book for Welpinet, Washington, which is on the Spokane Reservation, that phone book reads like a ledger from David Thompson's journal because you have so many surnames that go right back to their, their French and Indian ancestors. And so with the place names, and the surnames that uh, reside in the Indian tribes. The city of Coeur d'Alene and the Coeur d'Alene Indian people, they share a common fur trade legacy.